people to see my screen so uh, thanks jane uh so let's uh, quickly get started uh, with the session for today which is going to be azure file and azure file sync so uh, as the reason behind this session is uh, that there have been a huge demand uh, especially after uh, the covid situation that uh, you know customers or employees wanted to access their file share from home and uh, on premises file share has been a big problem so that's why we decided to take a session that you know how azure file and azure file sync can help you to uh, get it going with uh, uh i mean you know to extend your on premises uh file share to azure so there are two options which has been displayed here one is azure files which is a file share format where all the data will be on azure and you will access the files and folders as uh, as per your permission and as per your policies from home or from any device another option is azure file sync so azure files can replace your on premises file share and azure file sync is extension to your on premises file share so let's deep dive here so what we going to cover here today we going to cover the storage services that are available of course we cover the azure files the azure file sync on premises file share and the local access and how do we back up the data of azure files okay so now in azure we have four types of storages we have uh, the blob storage we have the table the queue and the file share now blob storage is basically uh, the storage which is used for unstructured data what do i mean by unstructured data unstructured data refers to your 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 vhds like your hard drive of your laptop unstructured data refers to your video your images all the data is all these type of data is unstructured data then uh, we have table table is data is stored in the form of table uh, of course but there is no schema in it i mean you know uh, as sql is also in form of table but the task schema this table storage doesn't have schema then we have queue storage uh the example of queue storage would be for example if there is a batch processing happening there is an application and there is a database server at the back end and if the database server is overloaded the data which the application is providing the data storage will be stored in the queue and of course then we have the file share we won't be deep diving in the other storage as if for now because storage is not our topic today but we will look into the file share so azure files i mean you know this is normally the normal file share which is accessed via the smb uh, 2.0 or 3.0 the normal on premises smb that we have as a protocol and how or what are the common uses which we can use the azure file share you can replace or you can supplement your on premises file server as i said you can either replace your file share or you can add it as a supplement to your on premises file share lift and shift if you want to lift and shift your on premises uh, data to <coughs> azure you can do it then we have azure file sync as an extension which we will deep dive if you have any shared application imagine you know there is a shared application which has been used by n number of users and you want a common share storage you can use azure file share if you want to upload any diagnostic data for your application for your machine uh, any failure anything you can use azure file share and you can of course keep any tools and utilities in azure file share so there are a lot of usage uh, which has been there in azure file share and uh, at the end of the session we going to have a demo we will have a deep dive demo of azure file share and azure file sync i will show you a rough idea that how we deploy it and what is the use case around it So let's get started with this. So I have just added this slide because you know I came up with this question that you know what is the difference between a blob and a file share? Because you know uh, a blob also normally you can access uh, via the storage uh, uh, explorer as uh, the tool to access the blob storage. So what is the difference? So the difference is very simple and very clear. Azure Files is basically an SMB uh, interface, a client library and REST interface. which can allow you 
to access the data from anywhere to any store. So basically, Azure File Share, if you have access, you can act, attach it as a map network drive. You can attach, you can give the permissions. Now, recently, Azure has announced that, you know, the file share is also integrated with on-premises AD. Before, before, I mean, few months back, Azure Files was not integrated with on-premises AD. Azure Files was only a part of, uh, you know, Azure File Share was only a part of Azure AD authentication and the file folder granular permission was not applicable. But now, in recent advance or the recent modification that they have done, it can also integrate with on-premises AD. You can act attach it as a map network drive. You can access it as a network drive when everything is possible. And blob storage, as I told you, is basically an unstructured data which can help you to access and store the blob. Uh, but, you know, uh, it cannot be accessed as a file share. So, uh, a small example of Azure file share that I have mentioned here. So now, uh, imagine this is your on-premises environment, which can be Windows, which can be Linux or uh, any client, or it can be any application. And this is any virtual machine, which is on Azure. They both can integrate and they both can access the Azure file share. You can, of course, attach it to a, to a iOS or to a Linux machine as a network drive. So it works on variety of protocol 2.x, 2.1, 3.0. Uh, it works on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, and it can, of course, be accessed by Azure and by on-premises VM as well. What about the security? Of course, the data is encrypted when the data is at rest or the data is on travel, and it acts as a secure communication. And uh, uh, sync, multi-site access, and cloud tiering, which we will talk in the Azure. So if you see... The, we have an application, we have a client machine which is on-premises and the right-hand side is a VM on Azure. We can have an Azure file share and this is an extension, your account name. Your account name can be anything, maybe uh, Reddington uh, demo dot file dot. So all the extensions. So we will do it in detail, but whenever you create any storage to Azure, this storage is globally accessible. So whenever you create a file storage, it will by default be created with the extension with the name of file.windows.net. There will be a account name and then and then forward slash your share name. If you create a blob storage, it's going to be blob.windows.net, table.windows.net. And this name, this account name should be unique because it is globally accessible. So, so, I mean, this is the command, net use command to map it as a network drive, which we will see in our demo. <clears throat> okay, so this, this is the command. If you are, uh, if you want to attach this machine as a network drive to any of a client, you just need to give the account name. I mean, uh, you just need to run this command, net use Z drive. I mean, this will attach as a Z, as a network, network drive. You can change it to any name. And then, this is an account name which has been displayed in the snapshot sk180227 storage.file.code.windows.net share.1 and then the down the f61 is the azure storage account key whenever you create a file share or any storage account it comes with the storage account key to access it as a security so you need to run this command and it will be mapped as a network drive and the down command sudo mount hyphen t is the uh, linux uh, command that has been given here Okay, another advantage of Azure File Share, why customers are very much attracted because of the backup. On-premises file share backup is a really big headache and everyone is aware about that. <clears throat> okay, so now, you know, imagine you have an on-premises uh, file share of 1 TB or 2 TB and backing up that is, you know, taking a third-party software attach any storage or any NAS drive it's a really big headache but azure file share we can take a snapshot easily if you see the process i mean we will do it in the demo as well it is very simple to configure user defined retention you can define the retention as per your requirement and point in time restore is absolutely possible so we will create a recovery service vault and we will add it as a file share we will 
pointed to our file share and the Azure snapshot is been taken. So you either take a backup as a normal backup or you either do a snapshot which is incremental, programmable or VSS like experience. So it is really very simple to take a backup uh, which we will show in a while. Okay, so how does the authentication works? As I told you, Azure file share, so you can use in two ways. First way is you keep your uh, uh, Azure file share on Azure and on premises AD up and running. Or the second option is Azure file share and authentication also with Azure ADDS, which is Azure Active Directory. Uh, uh azure adds service <coughs> active directory domain services as a service so if you see in the diagram we have a client which is uh, your windows 10 machine and that is joined to azure ad <coughs> sorry guys which is joined to azure ad and then we have azure ad and then we have an azure file share so what will happen the client will first enable the azure adds authentication the client will first go and authenticate with azure adds and then once the Azure AD identifies the user, it will identify the user and it will give the amount of permission the user have on this file share, which is in this example, the user is user1 at contoso.com. Then Azure files with storage account key and configure directory to Azure AD identity. Then the what will happen that first step, it went to Azure AD, Azure AD authenticate the user. Then what happened is, uh, uh the client it will get the map azure file share depending upon the permission it has based on the azure ad and it will sync back the permission to the azure ad and this as see now one thing guys azure adds and azure ad these are two different stuff azure ad is azure active directory and azure adds is azure ad active directory domain services these two are two different services on azure we will not go in detail but the azure adds it always sync from azure ad for this user and this is how the user will access the file using the azure ad credential by first authenticating with adds and then it will use the kerberos token to azure ad files for authentication so me to make process very simple we will configure azure ad whenever you take office 365 or dynamics or azure you get azure ad by default a basic version we will provision an azure adds we will join our machine to azure ad and then the client will access the Azure file share while authentication with ADDS and this ADDS will always sync with Azure AD and it will get all the files based on the Kerberos authentication token with all the Azure files that has been permitted to him as a user. Then there is another portion to it that, you know, customer said that, you know, I don't want to go to Azure ADDS. I want to use my on-premises machine, which is on-premises domain controller, which is Active Directory Domain Services, <coughs> which is fine. Now, in this case, what will happen is the client is already domain joined again, which is, of course, very true. But you will have Azure AD by default. As I told you, once you take Azure as a subscription, you get Azure AD. So what will happen is, you have Azure AD. This Azure AD is, we will use Azure AD Connect. Azure AD Connect is, uh, as few of them would might be aware, that AD Connect is a sync tool with the help of which we sync all the on premises users to Azure AD. Once the sync tool is been done, what will happen is the client will authenticate with the on premises AD. The on premises AD will give the token to the client, which is step number two. Based on the token, the client goes to Azure file share. The Azure file share will authorize that, you know, based on the Kerberos token. And then all this data is been synced with the on-premises ADDS. And the on-premises ADDS is always in sync with Azure AD just to make sure that, you know, uh, that the password change or password write back or user detailed change is being always synced with on-premises AD and Azure AD. So this is how an overview, how you can sync your Azure with the on-premises AD and how you can sync with Azure with uh, Azure ADDS service. So let's quickly jump into our demo. So let me quickly uh, share another screen here, which I have made specifically for this demo. So give me one quick minute here.
guys, all the questions that you have, uh, we will uh, first uh, complete the session and then I would be more than happy to, you know, uh, share all the information when it comes to specific questions that you guys have. So let me quickly go back to my application. Okay, for now, I will share my complete screen. Okay, I think you are able to see my screen. So let me quickly go back. So this is my demo account. I am I'm sure you are able to see uh, uh, the the uh, the Azure portal. Guys, can you give me a quick confirmation if you are able to see my portal because I have taken a remote uh, to my lab machine. Okay, perfect. Thanks. So, okay, what I will do, this is my Azure portal for the one who have not seen it. So what I will do, first of all, I will create a storage account. I'll search for storage. And in storage account, I will create any of the storage account. I'll click on add. And I will click on the storage account. So here where I will look at the subscription, I have one subscription. You can have multiple subscription. This and this is the place where you can create the storage account. I will go to another tab just guys hold on a second because this is where I've created okay so I will go to storage again I'll go to storage account I will click on add then I will choose a subscription I'll create a resource group uh, I will just give a name as test ABC and then storage account name I give a name test and it will give me an error as i told you this storage is unique there should this name should be unique because this is globally accessible just as your website so store it test demo file sync so this is available i'll choose a region and i will choose account type and i will choose uh, the replication type uh, i mean uh, i won't go in detail but you know when you choose an lrs a local redundant storage which means in the same data center three copy of your azure storage will be kept but in the same data center so if one rack goes down another two copy will be available but if the complete storage account goes down then uh, you know if complete azure data center goes down then that file share will not be available another is grs GRS means total six copies, three on prim, three in one data center and three in another data center in a different region. So this is a six copy in total, but this is going to be very expensive. It's going to be almost double because the six copy is being stored. So I'll I'll review, I'll click on review and create, and I'll create. But for now, I'll not create anything because I've already created something for you guys. I have already created a demo storage account. So in this demo storage account, to so you can see all the storage. I told you containers is a blob storage. You will see file share, you will see table, and you will see queue. Okay, now in our case, we want file share. I'll click on file share. And I've already created one, but to create one more, I'll do a file share add. I'll give a name, uh, demo, ABC, share. It is because I have given demo as capital. I'll click demo as caps. And okay, and you will give a quota. How much? Quota should be this file share for 100 GB, 200 GB, 1 TB, whatever the quota. If you hover here, it can be up to 5120 because an Azure file share has a limitation of 5 TB in total as one specific. You can create multiple file share here. So I won't be creating anything. Once I create this, the demo file share, you'll click on this. And once you click on this, you want to connect. Your file share is created, okay? You want to, your file share is created, you'll click on connect. Once I click on connect, <coughs> it will give me a command that you run this command. And once I run this command, my this drive as a network drive will be attached. And this is the command for Linux. This is a command for Mac. So for now, I'll go for Windows. I'll click on PowerShell and I will run the command. I won't be doing it now because I have already run the command. And once I do, 
run the command i will get a network drive which is attached here this is the one if you see demo file share is the name of demo storage account dot file dot core dot windows dot net and if i go to my portal this is my demo file share is my account if you see here demo file share is my account so what i will do this is act as a network drive so if i create any file here uh, replication test <coughs> And I'll go back here and replication test is created here once I click on replication test test I can upload any file here if you see here I will upload any file I'll I'll it will upload the file from a local machine so what I will do is uh, I will run uh, I will upload a file hold on a second let me see if I have anything here as well or I will or wait one thing and what i will do is okay veeam available okay microsoft hyper v host dot text i uploaded so hyper v text is been uploaded here if you see here and once i go back to my azure file share hyper v test host is been done here if i do okay let me see what is here this is here i will a b c t e s t if i do this if i click on save I'll go here and if I open this file, if I download and open this file, I will be able to see. So this is an ins instantaneous check or sync that has been happening here. And if I go to properties, it will show me what, okay, it will give me the URL if you directly want to, to upload this. If you want to add a new directory inside this, you can do it. Uh, if you, okay, I let, let me do, I mean, okay, ABC, anything guys. An ABC directory will be uploaded here. And if you see, ABC is instantaneously reflected here. So a sync is back and forth very seamlessly. Within seconds, you can do it. You can upload, you can download. Uh, you can view the complete property. What is the amount of quota? This is the area where you can take a snapshot. See, now imagine I have, I have this is my file share. And uh, I go to the file share and I want to take a snapshot of this file share. I'll go to snapshot. I'll click on add snapshot. And my snapshot is been created right away. And if I go to the snapshot, I will see whatever is, is in this folder. And I can go to this specific file and I can restore the specific file as per see. If you see, I can download or I can restore it. As soon as I click on the restore, it will ask me that restore as copy and rename the file or overwrite the original file that you have. I mean, it cannot be more simple than this to put a file share on Azure or to map it or to restore it or to take a backup. There is another way of doing it. If you want to take a detailed backup, then I'll go to Recovery Service Vault. Recovery Service Vault is basically an area where you know uh, you you create the Recovery Service Vault in order to take a backup or to create a DR. So for now, if I want to take a backup, I'll click on Backup. Where are your workload running on Azure? What do you want to backup? You want to back up Azure File Share, VM, SAP, or SQL. I said Azure File Share. I'll click on backup. It will ask me select a storage account. I will click on the storage account that I have. Okay, I'm not able to see any storage account because this Nerdio backup has been created in a different region and I've created a storage account in a different region. But okay, let me create a recovery service vault. Okay, no, I will put it in the same region, demo storage, UA North, vault name, file backup. I'll click on review and create. Let us just create, give it, give it a second, it will create in a while. Uh, guys, as I discussed, all the questions, we will answer the questions one by one at the end of the session. So uh, please bear with me for a while. Uh, currently, now we are only taking a backup for Azure File Share. So I'll go to Azure File Share. I'll click on Backup again. I will click on Select Storage Account. 
here i will put up the storage account name and here i will give the backup there is another way of doing it so here i can take a backup or i can schedule the backup based on the requirement i will go here i will uh, sure i'll take azure storage azure file share what i want to take a backup i can add an azure file share and i can schedule a backup again here so let me quickly go back to storage so guys that's it for azure file share so currently i am not integrating azure file share with my on premises file share i am only integrating azure file share with my ad but there is a possibility where you can integrate azure file share with your on premises file share and i will give you a link to do that like if you search azure file share ad authentication you will get an overview of on premises ad authentication that how to do it what all things are supported and everything in detail and you can go to the article in this case so now uh, azure file share this is pretty much it now uh, we will uh, quickly jump into the azure uh, file sync part and once the azure file sync part is done uh, then i will go ahead and answer all the questions okay so we have done azure file share we have done uh, snapshot part azure file sync very very important topic and very useful information now <coughs> imagine now <coughs> imagine you have an on premises file share and the normally the data of on premises file share imagine if you have an on premises file share with a data of 2 tb let me say that if the data is 2 tb but how much is the hot data how much is the data which has been accessed very very frequently normally as per a survey not even 25 percent of the data is is hot data or is normally accessed data the reason behind this is most of the data the user might have left the company or you have kept the data in for for you know uh, you might have just kept the data for compliance reason but you want the data you don't want the data i mean you don't want to lose the data but at the same time you don't want to bloat your file server you don't want to bloat your file share and then you normally get a request from your team again and again that you know my file server is full and uh, uh, i want to extend it so now microsoft has a solution for it called as azure file sync what azure file sync does azure file sync will act as an extended storage to your on premises file share what do i mean by that let me give you an example imagine this is your branch office and you have a folder in this format i i mean this is small but you know i'm so sorry but this is just just consider this as a folder structure and then you have an azure file share which is in west europe what it will do, does is azure file share i mean it azure file sync also use azure file share only once you select azure file share we will create a storage sync service and we will sync we will add an agent to your on premises branch office and it will take the complete data of your on premises file share to azure so your 100% if you have 2 tb data on premises your 100% data will be stored on azure file share on premises will be only hot data the data which you feel is hot imagine you this is called the term is called as cloud tiering so what we put we did a condition that you know if my on premises drive is full by 50% you sync the data to cloud you move the data to cloud only keep the hot data so your folder directory or folder structure is untouched your file folder level permission your if you see here few things are in uh, in 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 yellow color and other things are gray the other things are gray the structure is there but the data is on cloud the data is not on premises so only hot data so imagine you have heavy applications like autocad and everything and you don't want to download the files everything every time from azure so you will use azure file sync in this case so your user will keep accessing the on premises file share for hot data and for any cold data you will access the azure file share file i mean if anything that is been you access which is not available on premises then you will sync it from cloud and then again you can keep a condition that you know if the data is not been accessed for more than a month sync it on cloud once the data is accessed download it keep it again for a month and then sync it back so this is how your azure file share is 
So what are the advantages of it? There are multiple advantages. First advantage, on-premise is hot data, complete data on Azure file share. Again, the backup is absolutely simple. Take a snapshot and your backup is done. And another important point, imagine your on-premises file share is down. It is gone for hardware failure, for anything. You don't lose the data. You can spin up another machine and you just need to again install the agent called as Azure File Sync agent. Install the agent. Again, the hot data will be downloaded automatically. So you get high availability, you get easy backup and you get, you know, you get uh, uh, easy configuration here and you can download the data. It can also sync with multiple file share. Imagine you have multiple location. Imagine you have one location in Dubai, one location in Abu Dhabi. Take Azure file share as centralized repository. All the data will be stored in Azure file share and this two data will have the common file share look repository but only hot data that needs to be accessed on premises. You can have a branch office. You can do this Azure file sync with another Azure file sync agent. You can replicate that and you can put it in another branch cache. So basically this replaces your DFSR as well. If you have DFSR, one in one location, two in another location, you can achieve the same in Azure File Sync. User can access with SMB, user can access with S, uh, uh, NFS, and user can access with Apple, iOS, or Android as a device, as a machine. Uh, uh, REST API, IaaS, everything, and you can back it up in an Azure Backup Vault. So to simplify this, Azure File Sync is basically a repository where you can store your complete file share and you can access your data. You can keep your hot data on premises and this is an area where the hot data will be accessed and the complete data is on cloud. Backup is very simple. Replicating to another location is very easy. Access it from any device, anywhere. SMB, REST, from IaaS, from PaaS services, everything is been possible with Azure File Sync. There is one limitation which I want to highlight. The limitation is if you make any changes to on premises file server, imagine you have an on premises file server and you have your Azure file share. If you make any changes, it will be replicated right away to the share. If you make any changes to any text to any folder, it will be replicated. But if, if you make, if you can access the file share folders directly from file share, not from, you don't go to on premises, you can access the data directly from file share. But any changes that has been done on the file share, which is on Azure, it takes 24 hours. There is a cycle which is run after 24 hours and then only it will make change on premises. So you might tend to lose some data. So you need to keep in mind that Azure file sync you cannot access the data. I mean, you can access the data from any device anywhere directly to cloud, but the sync process is very, very slow. I mean, it will take 24 hours. So on-premises to Azure sync very fast. Sync Azure sync to on-premises is very, very slow. So guys, uh, let me quickly run down to all the questions that you have, and then we will jump into the demo of Azure file share. <laughs> the first question that we had from one of our brother was, I'll stop the sharing now. The first question we had from uh, one of our brother Muhammad was Azure files, uh, Azure file need any serve, I mean, any server or any Azure, just create a storage and mapper drive. Absolutely. There is no server required. See, two options. If you are taking Azure file share as a service, there is no server required. I just showed you. But if you want to promote a virtual machine and make it as a file share, normal as your on premises, then you need a server. But for Azure file share, there is no server, only a store, an Azure account, a subscription, a storage account is required, you're good to go. Another question, do we need any license to create a file share? No, only a subscription is required. There is no license required as such. Your subscription will create a storage account and you'll create it. Another question was, can you control the share folder on premises? Uh, I'm not sure. Let me rephrase the question. If this is a question that you, the question that you have is that, you know, uh, if you have an Azure file share, can you control your file share from on-premises? Yes, I showed it in my demo. I mean, in my slides that 
you can integrate azure file share with azure ad and azure adds and you can also integrate with on premises ad uh, which is the link i will show it to you uh, i will i will share the link in a while where you can control your on premises file share can we see the audit logs yes you can see the audit logs you can configure the audit and you can see the audit logs does the recovery service vault where no one can reach can affect it even if man data is deleted same in see recovery service vault is basically the backup that you are you are taking can someone reach it there are two ways of reaching it one is if you give any permission that uh, you give it or if there is any hacking or any third party hacker uh, or you know any anonymous user or any dark web guy they access it and can delete it but you create multiple recovery points you create multiple recovery points and you take the data uh, backup accordingly okay the question is from rahul that is the copy of cold data stored in azure or the entire data i think uh, this is for uh, azure file sync complete data is on cloud see uh, what i told uh, i mean if you remember that if your on premises file share is down or is crashed you can spin up another machine and you can download the sync agent and you can come it up i mean if only partial data is copied to cloud then you know once your on premises is down you lose the data so in azure file sync case every 100% data is on cloud and only hot data is on premises <clears throat> another question is can we make the sync process fast of course the sync process depends upon your bandwidth and depend upon the cloud tiering that you guys have yes uh, we have will have a recording our guy junaid will share the recording at the end of uh, this session and then we will also share the ppt and the recording and you will be able to access that so guys uh, this was from the question side let me quickly go to the demo of azure file sync how to do it so for creating azure file sync what you need to do first of all i need to create i will go to azure i'll click on add and i will search for file sync azure file sync in azure file sync <coughs> i'll create a new storage here you will get a short demo how is it i'll create a file sync in our case i will i won't do it because i already have it once i do this i will create a storage sync service storage sync service what i have created here i can create new storage sync from the file sync but here i have already created so i'll go to my storage sync service here once the storage sync service is created sure. i need to yes junaid you can see your screen Oh, I'm so sorry, Junaid. Guys, my bad. I will uh, share my screen again. Junaid, this is better. Can you see it now? Yes. Perfect. So, okay, guys, I'll, I'll I'll do it again. So, what I will do is I will create a new resource and I will search for file sync. And I will create a new file sync. You'll get a short uh, description here. Where is the file sync? But in our case, we will create a file sync. I already have a file sync, so I won't be doing it now. So what I will do is, I will go to the file sync that I have already created, and you need to add a sync group. So what will happen is, you need to give give a sync group name, maybe test, maybe sync group, and then you will take a subscription, and then a storage account. Which storage account you want to link this file share? I already have a storage account, so I won't be taking this, and. You will give a file share name, okay? So for in our case, I have already created it. So I I have the storage account name. Here I will add the server endpoint. So once you download the Azure File Sync agent, this is an Azure File Sync agent. Once you download the File Sync agent, you will get a exe that you run and you will register. You will enter your username and password. You will register that server here. Once the server is registered, you will see your server here. And once the server you said, see here also, I don't have any registered server. This is the area where you download the sync agent. But this is a place, the registration and all, it takes quite a while. And it's sync. And once you go get it, you will get a sync group and you will set the sync data. And once the sync data is set, you can configure the cloud tiering and everything once the data has been registered and once you have the detailed information present. So guys, uh, one more thing that I would like to share. So this is this is all about the Azure file sync. There isn't much in that. Uh, what I will do is I will give I will share this article.
in the chat window as a broadcast message that you know uh, this is where you can authenticate with your on premises ad files and then why azure file sync is been used you can do a multi site sync as i told you you can do cloud tiering turn a server into lightweight perform cache to azure file share i mean all the data will be showed in azure file share and only hot data will be on premises direct cloud access you can access the data directly on cloud but of course as i told you the limitation if you want to get the data from cloud if you want to replicate or sync the data from cloud to on premises that the cycle runs every 24 hours integrate cloud backup the backup will be done in the same way as i showed you for the file share backup and rapid file server dr if your on premises server is gone no problem we will create one server install the sync agent and you are you will register with the azure file share and you are available available uh, right away so so azure file sync can replace your on premises dfsr distribution file server replication can do cloud tiering and can synchronize data and the permission as you have on premises so uh, guys uh, that's it from the azure file sync file sync part that we have uh, a uh, few things that i want to uh, share here that we are currently running a promo what promo we are running for the new customers if you have any new customers and they want a solution called as backup or they want a dr or they want small setup like file share or azure and file sync on azure we will do a free deployment and we are giving first month consumption free as well okay so i'll repeat we are giving uh, yes but the screen is short because we are done with the demo but the, you know if you want i mean we are done with the demo we will be sh sh sharing uh, you know the slides with you so uh, i mean we had limited time we had only time till 11:45 and then we will stop for your questions so as i told you we are currently running a free promo for any small workload on azure maybe backup for 3 to 4 virtual machine or dr or file share or azure file sync we are giving first month consumption free and we are also giving the deployment free of course there are some limitations to it but if you or your customers anyone has any requirements feel free to reach out to me i will give my email address in the chat window yes uh, many thanks shoaib uh, thank you for such an insightful session guys if you have any questions or any uh, queries you can definitely reach out to shoaib at any point in time All right thank you guys for attending thanks shoaib